G'day everyone, it's John in Los Angeles. Welcome to the third webinar for the 2012 series. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be around the US or Canada. Uh, for those of you that haven't joined us before, we're going to keep these sessions pretty quick. We've actually got two operators today and the overall session we're aiming for 20 minutes again. So it's uh, my privilege to introduce to you the team over in Adelaide, Matt Guy, our uh, Marketing executive, how are you today, Matt? I'm very well, thank you, John, and yourself. I'm very well. How is sunny Adelaide? It's uh, it's, it's sunny. It's warm here today. A big old 31 degrees. So we're oh. uh, enjoying a, a spat of warm weather, which is great. Beautiful. I know the tour down under just finished as well. Absolutely, yeah. Great success. Um, record turnouts, and um, yeah, it uh, was a sensational event once again. Fantastic. So just before I introduce the, uh, the two operators, just a reminder, if you have got a question during the session, feel free to type it into the chat box or the question box at any point. I'm going to be looking at that throughout the session and we'll have a couple of minutes for questions at the end of each presentation. So with that being said, I'm now going to introduce Paul Brown from Kangaroo Island Wilderness Tours. How are you, Paul? I'm good, John. How are you? Good, mate. So um, for those of you that have joined previous sessions, I know we've, uh, we've had two uh, series uh, conducted before. We've actually changed the format up a little bit. It's going to be more of a question and answer format. So I'm going to ask uh, Paul around six questions and we'll have some images to go on the background of that. So Paul, are we ready to go? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, question one. If you could explain to us uh, what you offer and what makes Kangaroo Island Wilderness Tours unique uh, in 60 seconds or less. So Kangaroo Island is a unique wildlife destination and what we do is very personalised, it's highly personalised. We carry a maximum of six people on our luxury tour vehicles and we use exclusively local tour drivers. Great. And how do you access uh, your experience and products from Adelaide? Um, you see the shot up on the screen of Regional Express. We use them just about exclusively. 95% of our clients choose to fly to Kangaroo Island both ways. If people want the fly and ferry experience, we encourage people to fly over and then ferry out. Of course, we do some private shuttle work with Chinta Tours, who you're going to hear from later. And also, if we jump across to Seascape Lodge, maybe uh, we can chat a bit about how to access uh, your property there as well. Yeah, most of our clients fly over for that and one of the good things about Seascape Lodge is that we're close to the airport. We're only about 15 minutes from the airport. So typically people would fly over in the afternoon. Uh, we'd pick them up from the airport and they'd be transferred and settling into Seascape by 6.30 in the evening. And then we sit down for dinner about 7.30, so that's a pretty relaxing way to, to start their trip. And then they'll get picked up from tour for tour about 9 o'clock the next morning. Pretty relaxing way to start the their trip to Kangaroo Island, which generally lasts a couple of days, two or three days touring on Kangaroo Island is perfect. Excellent. And what's the most surprising element of your experience that clients talk about? Uh, I think mostly it's our driver guides. And you're seeing a picture of those driver guides. They are pretty unique. And I think people are surprised by the amount of knowledge they have about Kangaroo Island, not only about the plants and the birds and, and the animals, but their local knowledge. Uh, we've got a policy of not hiring any drivers unless they've lived on the island for at least 25 years. Most of our drivers were born on Kangaroo Island. So they have a special knowledge about Kangaroo Island, the sort of information that you can't get out of a book. They've got it by actually living there, experiencing it. And a number of those people in that, that photo have been on Kangaroo Island for several generations. And they've got roads named after them, beaches named after them, and they're real true Kangaroo Island characters. And it really does add something to the tour. And what about the destination of Kangaroo Island itself? What are the typical things that you hear from from clients on the trips? Oh, they just love um, the nature, the wildlife, um, being out in the open, uh, lack of crowds. I think that's the, you know, we have clients from North America and Europe as well, and um, they just, if you come from a big city and you see something like it's on the screen now where you're two people overlooking a beautiful beach like that and there's nobody else there, um, that's just phenomenal and they love the wide open spaces and 
certainly they really appreciate Seascape Lodge, our accommodation property, because it overlooks a beautiful white sandy beach and they love just relaxing, the lack of noise, um, the lack of people is just fantastic. And I'm also going to jump in here, as, here too, because I have had the fortune of staying at Seascape Lodge with, with Paul and uh, his wife Mandy and one of the most surprising things for me was the quality of food that you get. and. Uh, also, the amount of fun because Seascapes are hosted experience. So maybe you could talk a bit more about uh, Mandy's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm obviously I'm going to brag about Mandy's cooking because I have to. But um, we are rated number one on TripAdvisor, and um, we're getting great feedback about Mandy's food. And she does a wonderful job of that, and it's a different experience because it is hosted. Mandy and I join the guests for dinner every night, and that means that they've got it sort of the insight to the local community as well because I've lived on the island for over 40 years and he's been there for over 30 and so we're able to talk about what it's like to raise their children on the island as well and um, really does uh, add something to the stay at Seascape the fact that we're able to join the guests for dinner. It's the fun bit for us. We get to meet some really interesting people. So, so that's great um, being able to share our home with these people and that's exactly what it is. And, um, just remember, though, that we are able to book all of the other accommodation houses on Kangaroo Island, but the stay at Seascape Lodge is available exclusively to Kangaroo Island visitors. Too. Excellent. And Paul, can you uh, let us know if there's any changes that have been implement, implemented from uh, an accommodation or touring point of view in the last year since uh, many people have probably seen you or dialed uh, onto the webinar? Uh, we're constantly refining what we do. Um, we change our cars every two to three years and that's going to happen in the next six months or so. We'll change the cars over, they're now two years old. Um, but it's new to all of our clients and they love it. And that's why we were rated, um, num we're rated number one on TripAdvisor for Seascape. Um, we won an award of excellence uh, on TripAdvisor based on our client feedback. And we also won the best escorted touring experience in Australia in, in the last two or three years. So. People love what we do. It's new to them every time they get in the car. We do have some return visitors, but mostly it's a new experience for everybody and they love it. Great. And we may have gone past it, but have you got a favourite image or photograph that you'd like to share with the group? Uh, I'll try to get back, go back to the one with um, the car sitting in the scrub because that's the one that really defines it for me. Um, because we're such a small group, um, we're able to get off into places that other operators aren't able to do and this really typifies what we're able to do. Get off into the bush, find a nice setting to have lunch. Um, lunch is for us a food and wine experience, serving local produce like kangaroo and wines which are really good quality, cheap cheeses and yogurt, things like that and it's just pretty relaxed. You can see the people are enjoying having a look around the bush and, and Peter's looking after them. The guides do a wonderful job of looking after our clients and, making them feel uh, at home on Canberra Island uh, with a local person. Fantastic. So the final question, what way can you assist the webinar participants on today to help promote or learn about your experience? Um, just the contact details are there and uh, the next slide, slide is of Sue Morris who's our reservations manager. She's wonderful in the office and does a great job. So it's really just a matter of contacting Sue. Um, I'm involved in these webinars. I'm also involved in Corroboree. I went up for the new product workshop and the Nature and Adventure workshop in the States last year and I'll continue to do that sort of thing. So I'm trying to do as much as I can to make contact with the agents and certainly just feel free to contact us any time you want. If there's a question, really it's just easy to come to us direct and we're happy to book through the supply chain, whatever people want to do. But People have got questions about flights, accommodation, transfers, any of that sort of thing. Really the best thing is just to get in touch with us and so we'll look after you really well. Thanks so much, Paul. And thanks, Matt, for coming back to that uh, screen with Paul's contact details. They should be on the screen now. So just while we're uh, waiting uh, for questions to come through, just a reminder to type into the question box or the chat box. Uh, I've got a question from Andrew. Can you take guests from Seascape around to see the penguins? Yes, we can. We do penguin tours 
um, out of sea scope. They are a bit seasonal this time of the year. The birds are not there. Um, they go out to sea this time of the year. But certainly the rest of the year we're able to organise penguin tours from sea scope lots. So the penguins, is it uh, generally January and February that they can tend to go quiet? Yeah. Um, the colony actually, um, the place where you see them, shuts down in February uh, for the whole of the month of February. And really they're a bit hard to find this time of the year. So apart from that, it's fine. Um, yep. You know, there's sometimes there's lots of birds there, sometimes there's chicks there, um, but this time of year it's very quiet. Okay, I've also got a question about the property name. Uh, due to our Australian accents, which may be a little bit difficult to understand, <laughs> the property is called Seascape, S-E-A-S-C-A-P-E, -E, Lodge. Yeah. And three rooms, correct, Paul? Yeah, just three guest rooms, um, so really uh, quite intimate, and very personalised, and uh, we have na different nationalities sitting around the table, and it's a lot of fun. Excellent. Thanks so much, Paul. What we might do, if we've got any other questions, we'll come back uh, at the end.